These films took us for a ride and failed to stick the landing. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 20 worst movie endings. It's the most important part of the story, the ending. And this one is very good. For this list, we'll be looking at the most disappointing, anticlimactic, nonsensical, sentimental, god awful endings in cinema history. This is your spoiler warning, but really, we aren't spoiling much. Number 20, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Kicking off our list is the Indiana Jones film that went away from the spiritual and straight into sci-fi. How do we open it? While we could stomach a lot, this film nuked the fridge big time when the Crystal Skull awakened a generic alien who proceeded to melt Kate Blanchett's brain. <laughs> Even worse is the image of Indy witnessing a spaceship flying off into another dimension. The ending of The Last Crusade and originally the series was perfect. Why'd they have to go mess with it? Number 19. Superman. Don't get us wrong, there's still something magical about 1978's Superman, but that doesn't mean the ending makes any sense. When Superman fails to save Lois Lane, he decides to just throw out the laws of physics. <laughs> this involves Superman nonsensically using his super speed to reverse the rotation of the planet and turn back time, because that's how it works. Now, we're not scientists, but we're pretty sure that would just kill everything, rather than save anyone's life. This ending is more likely to leave viewers puzzled than impressed. Number 18, The Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn Part 2. There are many who'd argue that the beginning and the middle of The Twilight Saga were pretty bad too, but even diehard fans had difficulty standing up for its ending. The final battle scene has some moments, but the conclusion is simply a con, revealing that the whole battle was just a vision. The Varturi might be gone, but they will never forgive what happened here. It's to be expected that a book-to-film adaptation should employ creative license, but at least make it worth our while. Where did you do that? In, practice. in the end, the epic something was an epic nothing, and an epic waste of time. Forever. Forever. Number 17, Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen. The Transformers, they've been here a long, long time. While some films on this list were perhaps a little too hasty to kill people off, the Transformers team flirted with the idea of KOing a main character, but couldn't quite follow through much to our frustration. First Sam dies and is then revived, and then the unthinkable happens as Optimus Prime looks to be on his way out. But it's okay, because he's a robot, and robots can get spare parts. Could that energy somehow be used to reactivate Optimus and bring him back to life? All that was ever needed was a service and an upgrade, and then hey presto, day is saved. A living prime! <laughs> I don't believe it! Number 16, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I love you. Everyone loves an emotional ending, but The Amazing Spider-Man 2's attempt was just cringy. Hey, what it says, it says I love you. Because I love you. Sure, it's kind of cute when the kid stands in the way of the rhino, even if it's sort of confusing as to exactly why rhino's there. But when the real web slinger arrives back into shot, we just can't suspend our disbelief any further. Hey, Spider-Man. I knew you'd come back. The heart to heart, the fist bump, the megaphone, and the manhole cover. It all reeks of cheese. This ending was meant to keep us guessing, but it only had us cursing. Number 15, The Forgotten. When in doubt, blame aliens. 
That's apparently what the filmmakers behind The Forgotten decided when they came up with this ending. Sam, he grew up. He was nine. Nine. I had nine years of memories. The film follows Julianne Moore's character, Telly, who believes she had a son, but no one else in her life remembers him. He always wore that hat. Telly, please, you're scaring me. Tell me what's wrong. It's an intriguing premise, which seems set to raise questions about Telly's sanity and takes us for a ride into government conspiracy territory. That is, until the reveal that it was all aliens. There are worse things than forgetting. No, there aren't. You need to forget! Yep, turns out the government is working with extraterrestrials to conduct a completely nonsensical experiment about maternal instincts. E.T., go home. I need more time. Number 14, Saw 3D. The original Saw's twist ending shocked us, but man, did this series jump the shark. Something like that doesn't get you to change your perspective on life. I don't know what will. Remember Dr. Lawrence Gordon, the guy who cut off his foot in the first movie? Well, get this. He managed to survive, and in the final act of Saw 3D, it's revealed that he's been Jigsaw's partner in crime ever since. Without you, my work over the last few years would not have been possible. In retaliation for killing Jill, Gordon kidnaps Detective Hoffman, takes him to a familiar room, and declares the game officially over. It's totally ludicrous, but at least the franchise got marginally better with 2017's Jigsaw. Game over. No! Number 13, the number 23. In this psychological thriller from Joel Schumacher, Jim Carrey's character Walter finds a book titled The Number 23. It tells the story of a detective who murdered his own girlfriend. With an increasing amount of things in common with the character and the eponymous number seemingly popping up everywhere in his life, his own sanity begins to unravel as he pulls at each thread of the mystery. What mysterious forces could be at work? Someday I'm going to write a book and I'll do it to somebody else. Walter. Oh, God. And whoever wrote it knows you very well and only they can give you your answers. Well, as it turns out, it was actually Walter who wrote the book himself before giving himself amnesia. Of course. Mom, who wrote the book? Do you Tell know? Tell him who wrote it. Tell him. You wrote the book, Walter. Number 12, Lucy. It's hard to say whether Lucy is a smart story stuck in a dumb movie or a dumb story stuck in a smart movie. One thing's for certain, though. Its ending is 100% idiotic. As her brain reaches maximum capacity, Lucy transcends all humankind, becomes one with the space-time continuum, and leaves behind a flash drive for Dr. Morgan Freeman. It almost feels like director Luc Besson is trying to channel 2001. But instead of going out on a profound note, Lucy leaves the audience slapping their foreheads in frustration. Number 11, Serenity. Matthew McConaughey has starred in some incredible films, and Serenity is not one of them. Sir, we paid you 700 bucks for this. What starts off as a mystery thriller with an impressive cast soon becomes, well, a computer game. Yeah, they're all in a computer game, except for Matthew McConaughey's son, Patrick, who's real and created the game. He's got this whole world. There's this guy on a boat, and he's catching fish. It turns out the scenes that seem like flashbacks of Patrick are actually in the here and now. If I didn't catch fish all day, I didn't catch fish, I'd find a way, to kill. Catch fish all day, I'd find a way to kill you. This last fact is revealed at the end when Patrick kills his abusive stepdad. Sadly, by this point, the audience's suspension of disbelief is already dead. Ah! Patrick! Number 10, Now You See Me. Oh yes, that would be, uh, yeah, what do the kids call it these days? Oh yes, that's right, magic. A good magic trick builds anticipation that leads towards some sort of big reveal. And understandably, audiences were expecting the same from the ending of Now You See Me. The vast majority of the film is seriously slick, the magic is impressive and left us all waiting on the edge of our seats for the conclusion. But when that presented itself as one double agent cop and a series of plot holes big enough to personally fall into, viewers were sighing rather than smiling. Dylan? Wait a minute. Dylan, how did this happen?
Dylan! Number nine, Star Trek Into Darkness. Into Darkness was such an awesome follow-up to J.J. Abrams' Star Trek reboot that it's easy to forgive the film's absurd ending. My name is Khan. With that said, it was a pretty absurd ending. Rather than paying homage to Wrath of Khan, Into Darkness literally recreates its spiritual successor's iconic climax. The only difference is that Kirk and Spock reverse roles, leading to Kirk's demise and Spock making William Shatner's infamously silly cursing sound even sillier. <laughs> Don't worry though, because Bones basically cures death and brings Kirk back to life. Well, that's convenient. Oh, don't be so melodramatic. You're barely dead. Number eight, Cats. The ending, you say? How about the whole movie? That's a good point, but the ending is particularly bonkers. Get out! Admittedly, director Tom Hooper had his work cut out for him when he decided to adapt Andrew Lloyd Webber's musical, which doesn't really make sense either. But you can get away with levels of absurdity on stage that don't necessarily translate to film. The ending of Cats sees outcast Grizabella singing a song at the Jellicle Ball that wins her a ride on a chandelier to the heavy side lair, a metaphor for rebirth that's also a literal place of some sort. This is despite the efforts of the evil McCavity, who for some reason has magic powers. Yeah, makes sense of that. Heavy side here I come. Number 7, The Matrix Revolutions. By the end of his trilogy, the storyline had become so convoluted that it needed something extra special to hold it all together. The program Smith has grown beyond your control. Soon he will spread through the city as he spread through the Matrix. Unfortunately, the film dodged that idea entirely. Sure, Neo's sacrifice is heroic and Smith's demise is a good thing. But what about everybody else plugged into the Matrix? He ended the war, the machines are gone! The war is over, sir, the war is over! Has the whole thing just been explained away by a brief encounter on a park bench? A pretty sunrise is nice, but it doesn't answer any questions. Everything's okay now. How long will there be peace? Will the ones who want out actually be freed? And what does the oracle mean that we'll see Neo again? Will we ever see him again? I suspect so. Someday. Number 6. War of the Worlds Arguably, Steven Spielberg was fated to disappoint from the start by choosing to remain loyal to War of the Worlds source material. This means that the aliens are defeated by germs. Did these intergalactic travelers learn nothing from the extraterrestrials who were defeated by water in signs? Do your research, aliens! Still, the movie looks set to challenge us with an ambiguous and powerful ending since Ray's son Robbie presumably died after stupidly running into battle. But guess what? He's alive, without a scratch on him. And the narration wraps up everything in a nice, tidy bow. They were undone, destroyed, after all of man's weapons and devices had failed, by the tiniest creatures that God and his wisdom put upon this earth. Number five, The Happening. Why is this happening? I don't know for sure, Josh. Frankly, when it comes to bad endings, M. Night Shyamalan's movies left us spoiled for choice. Signs, the village, lady in the water. There were children in that room. Elliot, please tell us what to do. I need a second, okay? Why can't anybody give me a goddamn second? Audiences still fondly remember the twist ending in his breakout film, The Sixth Sense. But man, have there been a lot of disappointments since. Ultimately, though, we had to go with the happening. Plants and trees just can't pick up and move when they feel threatened like other species. They have only one option, to rapidly evolve their chemistry. Sure, there's a well-meaning environmental message in there. But you're saying that the mysterious mass suicides in the northeastern United States were set in motion by trees? Global warming. Temperature goes up a fraction of a degree, makes them disoriented, maybe. And trees are now about to cause global catastrophe. We sat through this entire film for that? To be perfectly honest, um, this was an act of nature, and we'll never fully understand it. Number four, 
Planet of the Apes. Messing with the classic film's iconic twist ending. That's just bananas. You maniacs! You blew it up! In the famous 1968 film, Charlton Heston's George Taylor realizes that the Planet of the Apes is really Earth. He's traveled to the far future. For his 2001 reboot, Tim Burton decided to add a different twist, but one that has more shock value than logic. The hero returns home to discover that apes have taken over, shown by a dramatically reworked Abe Lincoln memorial. This is actually closer to the source material, but in the novel, centuries have passed, allowing time for apes to become the dominant species. In the movie, there's no explanation whatsoever. And even if this did make sense, it would still pale in comparison to the original. Number three, Remember Me. So, uh, what do you want? This was a twist ending no one wanted. It turns out this romantic coming-of-age drama starring Robert Pattinson was somehow about, yet not really about, September 11th. I gotta go to my dad's office. There's no compelling story reason for the movie to end with such a tragic event, but the filmmakers shoehorned it in anyway. The film follows Pattinson's character Tyler, whose life is already full of tragedy. His brother killed himself and he has a rocky relationship with his father. But then Tyler falls in love, patches things up with his dad, and dies in the Twin Towers. Whatever you do in life will be insignificant. But it's very important that you do it. Yeah, it didn't make sense to audiences either. Number two, I Am Legend. Richard Matheson's novel I Am Legend is a classic that inspired the movies The Last Man on Earth and The Omega Man. We may have something here. What made it so memorable was its ending, when vampire hunter Robert Neville realizes that for vampires, he is the terrifying monster preying on the innocent. The Will Smith vehicle, I Am Legend, seemed to be going in the same direction, until sending Smith out with a bang and his friends on to live happily ever after. Dr. Robert Neville dedicated his life to the discovery of a cure and the restoration of humanity. It's a conclusion that completely undermines the source material in favor of pure cliché. Although an alternate ending was released on DVD, this movie's awful ending has become legendary. To save you time before we unveil our top pick, here are a few other movies that deserve dishonorable mentions and might save you time not sticking around for the ending for. Knowing. So aliens handpicked these two kids to survive the apocalypse. Makes sense. They've chosen us to go. They haven't chosen us, Caleb. They've chosen you. Both of you. X-Men, The Last Stand. Thank goodness this dreary ending wasn't actually the X-Men's last stand. Oblivion. An intriguing premise devolves into cheap one-liners and unanswered questions. I created you, Jack. I am your god. Secret Window. The bad guy is really the good guy's other personality. You don't exist. Me? I exist, Mr. Rainey. I exist because you made me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the devil inside. Was this a prank or what? We need to get under control. Taking our top spot is this found footage horror flick centered on demonic possession. She's waking up. I got much time, Michael. I haven't got much time. In the finale, priest Ben Rawlings realizes that Isabella isn't quite herself. Deciding that the hospital can't help her, he sets his hopes on an exorcism instead. A scuffle in the car leads to the driver getting possessed, and they veer into oncoming traffic. Then everyone's rolling around in the car, and it's horrible, and bam! Movie's over. And you're left with a website link? Wow, 
We hope you didn't pay to see this in theaters. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.